Yes, welcome back. Now that we know about functions, both JavaScript uh, compiled functions and user functions, let's talk about the return statement because it's a huge part of JavaScript as well as most programming languages. So the return statement works with functions and allows us to return some or all the value of a function. So say we have a variable with a value of 100 and another value uh, or another variable with a value of 25 but we want the difference between the two variables. So we'd have to use the return statement for this example, which is also going to allow us to exit our current function. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function, and I'll just call it my function. And I'll give it an argument this time. I'm going to put variables here, in, or I'm going to give it values inside its parameters. So I'll just call it 1 and 2, separated by a comma with no quotations and curly braces because now we're going to try to execute something or give it the program. So let's just type variable 3 equals 100, no, sorry, I already messed up, 1 minus 2 because we want the difference between these two uh, variables. So let's go ahead and return this variable that we just created. So let's use return three and let's close it out and let's save it reload it in our browser and nothing is there because even though we created this return function in the, this little mini program right here we haven't done anything with it it's just kind of sitting there off to the sidelines so what we need to do is we need to output it we need to document right we need to uh, somehow get it to our browser so, so just for the sake of this example let's go ahead and use the document right statement and in here we're not going to use three, we're going to use what our function is called up here, which is my function. And now we can go ahead and give it our missing valuable values, because we have our variables up here, but they don't contain a value. There's no string, there's no integer, there's no boolean, there's no null. So let's do that now. And we said in the beginning we had um, a variable with a value of 100, and we wanted to know the difference of the second value of 25, which should be 75 according to my calculations. So let's go ahead and look at this really quick. We created a function, and inside our parameters, we have an argument. We have two variables in here, and we're executing a third variable, which is the difference between one, which we created down here, is 100, and two, which is our second variable over here, which is 25, and we're looking to return this now, so it should just be 75 on its own. There it is, perfect. So we could have like, think of this on like a, a bigger scale. We could have a whole database right here separating um, or trying to find the difference between two or more. We could have more values, so this would be 80, and this should be 55, or we can multiply one times 2, and this is going to be, what, 180? 2,000. I was way off. Whoa, whatever that was about. Or we can divide it, which would be almost 4, 3.2. So that's the return statement. And it's going to, think of this on like a bigger scale. Say we had a giant, giant, giant database full of something. Well, say we just needed like two of the things and we wanted to return that. So that's when we use a return statement because it's going to break us out of that giant whatever our program is searching for, probably an array. And we'll talk about arrays in maybe the next video or maybe two down the line. But that's a return statement. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I'd love to hear your feedback. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So 